Hello and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour here on Verbling, we are going to talk about differences between European and American culture. We will do that by uh, students will take turns reading uh, a list of uh, differences that appeared in a recent article which uh, I will share with the class and then we'll we will uh, practice our English speaking skills by conversing uh, about these differences and um, you know, sharing our opinions do you think it's true do you think it's not true what else can you add some description whatever all right uh, Okay, let me uh, welcome students to the class. Hello, Mustafa. Welcome back. Hi, Mustafa. Hello, teacher. Thank you. Hello again. Hello, hello. Uh, okay, and also let me welcome uh, Gregors. Is that correct? Not in Polish. It's okay. just call okay. me Gre Greg or Gregory because usually people call me if they have okay. some difficulties. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for being merciful, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks. Anyway, welcome to the class as well. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. All right. Uh, also, let me say hello to Jose. Hello, Jose. Hello, teacher. Hello, welcome to the class. Good to, see, good to see you again. And also, I would need to welcome Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. You know, it's Monday, but yeah, yeah. I know Monday. Good. <laughs> yes. Monday for all of us. So yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, there's plenty of material, so I'm going to just jump right into it. I'm going to screen share a, uh, a recent article, and uh, we'll take turns reading these short passages, or you guys will read, <laughs> and then I will discuss the passage with you, the, uh, the validity of uh, what the article states, and uh, what's uh, what do you think about it, and so on. Uh, okay. Uh, let me quickly welcome Anna, Carolina. Anna, how Hi, are you? Peter. I'm fine. Thank you. Good morning. Sorry, I'm, I'm late. Uh, ah, yeah, no, no big deal. We haven't even really started yet. Uh, all right. Nice to see. You. A long time no see. Yes, so. teacher. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. What differentiates Europeans from Americans? The culture gap across the Atlantic. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a lot of intro here. I'm going to kind of skip that. Um, a little history about, uh, obviously, Americans, uh, a lot of Europeans went to America in the past, but nevertheless, things have kind of changed. All right. First thing, uh, Mustafa. Lead us off. To talk to, please read this pa uh, short passage about feeling of time and distances. Okay, perception is shaped by our in by our environment. A uh, one hundred year old house or church is considered new by Europeans, but old by Americans. I have even heard Americans think that twenty hundred years was ancient. For a European, ancient refers to something that is typically 2,000 to 5,000 years old, related to the antiquity, not antiquities. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'll let the next person take the um, next uh, section because I want to talk to you about this first, uh, Mustafa. Of course. Um, I know you're not from Europe, but you also come from a very old place. But first, let me talk to you a little bit about some pronunciation of some of the words here. I have even heard, okay, heard, 
not heared. The the verb is to oh. hear. Uh, hear, but yesterday I hear, but yesterday I heard. Different pronunciation of the vowel sound. Okay. Okay. Heard. Okay. I have even heard. Uh, that's better. All right. And uh, okay, two hundred years was ancient. A the a sound, not ancient, but ancient. It's like an a, a sound. Okay, ancient. Yeah, that's better. I like hey, ancient. Okay, and the last word, not mm -hmm. antiques. Okay, changes. Here it's an, antiques. Teeks, and Q U here makes a like K sound. Antiques. Antiques. All right. Antiques. Yeah. Do you, do you know what antiques are? Uh, the little old uh, things uh, from <laughs> the past history. Yeah. Uh, old things, but generally old things that are maybe measured in uh, hundreds of years, perhaps, rather than thousands of years normally. <laughs> uh, if it thousands of years, those would be ancient artifacts. Di totally different word. Something that that uh, an artifact, actually. Okay. Antiques is something you might have in your house. An artifact you're going to find in the museum. <laughs> For, a, for example. Uh, okay. Well, um, okay. What do you what do you think of this? Um, uh, yeah. Have you met many Americans? Do you think Americans think uh, relatively new things are are ancient? <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems like European. Is uh, they have like an old um, history or something like that? Seems it gives uh -huh. me the sense that that uh, American is modern than European. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So each of them, like the perception of each of them, is different. As uh, I read in the article, like uh -huh. each of them, like depend. For example, American. 100 year old. This is considered like very old for them. But European, no, 2000. Yeah. Okay. As an American, I have to say yes. A hundred year old house is considered an an old house by Americans. Uh, I would say that's true. However, this as an American, I would also say I've never heard, and I've never heard anybody say something 200 years old was ancient. Uh, personally, I've never heard it. Maybe the <laughs> author did, but uh, I've never heard that. I will add, though, as far as uh, learning English here, that you will hear an American call a really old man or woman ancient. <laughs> but that's more sarcasm slang kind of thing. Oh, the old man living upstairs in the apartment upstairs, he's ancient. The ancient old man. All right, you may hear that. I, I personally haven't heard it. Okay. Perce okay. Well, that's perception about time. Let's let me pass it on to the next person to talk about distances. Uh, Greg, can you read this next paragraph about distances? Okay. Things are reversed when it comes to distances. Europeans will tend to think that driving. 100 kilometers is quite a long way, while for Americans that would be rather near. This is due to the much higher density of population in Europe and the smaller size of Europe. Believe it or not, the European Union is over twice smaller than the US, yet Europeans travel much more than Americans, inside or outside their own continent. This might be because European are used to go abroad since their childhood. European country being so small and do not feel the whole experience to be exceptional. Suppos su supposedly Seattle residents feel the same about going to Canada as stones throw away. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 
All right, Greg, what do you, what do you think about this? <laughs> what do you think? Is 100 kilometers, you're from Europe, is 100 kilometers a long way for you? Uh, yes, it's probably uh, really? long, di long distance because uh, if I would think about the job driving 100 kilometers every day, I would give up. <laughs> however, however okay. it, when I was at the university, I was um, had 120 kilometers to school, so it is two hours and 30 minutes of uh, you know driving by the bus uh -huh. back and, back and forth, and I actually did it. I was right. going to, yeah to the capital, so that depends what you are doing. Probably if we think about work. Nobody from Europe will do will do it. Maybe some exception if yeah. probably. A hundred kilometers is like sixty miles. A sixty mile commute. Eh. Yeah, I don't know. That seems quite reasonable to me as an American. That's not that. That's a long commute. Somebody has like a thirty minute commute, thirty miles, say half this distance, fifty kilometers, a commute just to go to work. And back for an American, that's that's considered kind of reasonable. 100 kilometers yep. may be long for a commute, but uh, Greg, for uh, like a weekend, uh, oh, I'm gonna go for an American will drive 100 kilometers just to go shopping at a particular store on a Saturday and not think anything about it actually. So for free time. 100 kilometers, I assure you, as an American, that's nothing. We don't even think about it. We don't even think about it for two seconds. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, no big deal. To go to, like, a concert, a rock concert, or a ball game, you know, going 100 kilometers is absolutely nothing at all. Um, no one thinks about it. It's not, you don't even have to plan for it. Jump in the car and go. Yeah, that's very, very true, um, I think. Yeah, and I, I do also agree with this other part. It says uh, Europeans travel much more than Americans. Yeah, I like to travel, and everywhere I travel, I find Europeans, <laughs> especially Germans. <laughs> They're everywhere. But uh, Okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, Greg, have you traveled much outside the country? And uh, not really. I am no. Probably I'm an exception amongst Europeans because I was only I am only in the UK, and before that I was spent almost all my life in Poland. Mm -hmm. okay. so only two countries, so I don't know about the rest of the Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Uh, most Americans would probably be okay. I've been to America, and once when I was younger, I went to another country. That's very normal, I think. For Americans, there's a lot of Americans. Sometimes one thing people they think Americans travel to other countries. It's easy for them to travel to other countries because we often have visa agreements, so it's relatively easy. But really, most Americans don't ever leave the country. It's just the ones who do do it a lot. I think. I mean, that's just my opinion. Uh, okay, let me uh, welcome another student to the class here, Malik. Hello, Malik. Welcome. Hello, sir. Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, that's good, and uh, I'll catch up with you in a, a little bit. Let's read some more differences between Europeans and Americans. Uh, Jose, can you read? Yes. Cars. Okay. Cars. Almost all Europeans have cars with manual gears, while Americans have a marked preference for automatic automatic ones. European cars also are also very different in style than their American counterparts. American cars tend to be more massive and square because size matters in the stage. Americans have a fondness for very long limousines as well as pickup trucks in the country. Both are virtually unseen in Europe. Europeans like rounder designs of cars. Smaller cars are much more common in Europe, probably because Europe has a more 
urbanist population and small cars are easier to park in cities, especially on pavements of historical cities where big parking lots are rare than in the USA. Yeah, hard word to say. Rarer. 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 That's a hard one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other one here, Jose, Europe has a more urbanized population. Urbanized. Ah, it's urbanized. Ur. No, no Y sound, just ur. urbanized. Ur. Urbanized. 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 All right. Okay. Do you know what that means? Urbanized population. Yes, uh, the the people are more uh, concentrated in the in the city. Yeah, more concentrated in the cities. Well, yes. uh, okay. What do you think of this, uh, Jose? I think it's, it's true. The the European cars, uh, the form of uh, European cars is is is, di is different uh, than the American cars. Uh, mm -hmm. The the European cars uh, uh, are more uh, round, rounder designs of cars. Mm -hmm. the, the American cars are more uh, uh, square. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think so. And the the size of the of the uh, European cars are uh, are smaller than the American cars. The American cars are uh, are yeah. bigger. Definitely. And yes. Um, the American cars um, are uh, stronger than the <laughs> Europe, European cars. <laughs> so we can go faster and crash into things, Jose. Yes. <laughs> That's why. Because we like to go faster and run into things. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, as an American, I have to disagree slightly with this first one. I think, generally speaking, it's true. But it depends where you live. Um, I'm an okay. uh, American guy who often lived in the mountains because I enjoy hiking and skiing. And if you live in the mountains, you want to have a manual car. Almost nobody who lives uh, okay. in like ski resort towns has an automatic car. Uh, okay. It you depends live, where you live. In the in the mountain, don't don't use an uh, uh, automatic gear. Yeah, and also if you live where there's snow and ice. It's Okay. It's better to have manual. So I, I kind of disagree. I think it depends where you are personally. But that's my observation. I lived in America all over, in the Northeast, in the South, in the Rocky Mountains, and in California. So I think it totally depends where you are. But, yeah, okay. I agree. All this stuff it says about the size of cars and the overall designs. Um yeah, I don't know why, but Americans love limousines. You ever ride in a limousine, Jose? Uh, in, 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 in uh, what? What is the uh, question? Uh, have you ever ridden in a yes. long limousine? Yes, yes. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes, really? No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, two or three times along my life, no more. Oh, okay, okay, a few times instead of saying a few sometimes. times, a few times. Right. A few times, I've done that. A few okay. times. Me too. A few times, not often, but a few times. Yeah. It's practically a rite of passage to go to your prom. That's the big dance at the end of high school called the prom, to rent a limousine and. Or when you get married, you, you rent yes. a limousine. Yeah. In Spain, it's so, it's, it's so yeah. common uh, when you get married to rent uh, a limousine. Too. Yes. Okay. There you go. And I don't know why the rest of the world doesn't love pickup trucks. I really don't. They're awesome. <laughs> you you ever drive a pickup truck, Jose? No, I I never I never uh, drive I never uh, drive a, a pickup. All right. In in well, Spain is no so is no so much common to see pick up the trucks. Yeah. Well, they're awesome because they have a lot of power. They can go anywhere and they can carry yes. a lot of stuff. So anyway, I never understood why Europeans never use pickup trucks. I, I really just don't get it. 
They're great. They're so handy to have. You want to go skiing in the mountains or go biking? You just throw your stuff in the back of the pickup. No problem. You're off. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the all-important area of washing machines. <laughs> Rebecca, washing machines. Hmm. Your thought. <laughs> wow. Amazing stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Washing machines, okay. European washing machines normally have only a cold water inlet. The water brought to a quiet temperature inside the machine. As opposed to a hot and cold water inlet in the USA. European washing machines are almost always loaded from the front. As opposed to, to the top in the, in the USA. Interestingly, Japan decides to follow the American system. Yeah, okay. Well, talk to me about your washing machine, Rebecca. Does it does it match the European model? As described I, I, here? I think so, yeah. The reason is because I bought it here, I think, <laughs> you know. That's yes. for the, the main reason, you know, mainly. So... Okay. Um, so it only has a cold water inlet? Or uh, you know what? Uh, I'm not sure about the, the word inlet. Inlet means inside. Yeah, you could say intake as well. Um, that's right. So the, the water that's going into the machine, if it's hooked up to a pipe. Ah, it's, okay. It's only, only cold. Americans uh -huh. have two pipes going into the washing machine. We have cold and hot. It's very common. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, well, I don't know the mechanics of the, <laughs> no, the, the washing machine. You know, I never, no. I never thought about that. <laughs> well, okay, well, here you are. Now you can think about it. Uh, okay. All right. Is your washing machine loaded from the front? Um, loaded, what does loaded mean? Loaded well, is... You throw in your clothes. There's a door in the front of the machine. Yes, in the front. Yes, yes, because there are some uh, on the top. Yeah, but my, mine is a uh, load from the front. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I would say the same thing here with this one. I, I've seen plenty that in America that are loaded from the front, plenty that are loaded from the top. I don't, I don't know. I think we also... But most of them are from... I know most. I I don't know which one is more. I've seen plenty of both in the United States, uh, so I'm, I'm not yeah. sure about this statement. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like as you said, Rebecca. I didn't really pay that much attention, so <laughs> yes, I, didn't you know. I didn't tell my friends. Hey, can I take a quick look at your washing machine? I'm yes. doing a survey, a lifelong it's survey. Never. never ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah, I, I don't really know for sure. Uh, okay. Mm. I don't really know. All right, everybody knows about the metric system, so uh, the measurement system. So I'm going to skip this one, but everybody knows this. Europeans use the metric system, and Americans still, for almost everything, use the imp uh, Old English imperial system, yards, miles, Pounds Fahrenheit. They were. I remember when I was a kid, we were supposed to change. We had to learn the metric system, but then we learned it in school, but no one used it in real life. There was like a whole generation of us that learned it and then never ever used it. Yeah, and that was years ago, seventies and eighties. Okay. Ah, this is important for your English language learning. So let's look look at this one. Anna Carolina, can you read this one? Please. Sure, teacher. A date and, and time system. Europeans write the date in the form of day, month, year. Whereas Americans use month, day, year. Americans usually consider that the week starts on Sunday and ends on Saturday. While in Europe, it always starts on Monday and finishes on Sunday. Most non-English-speaking 
Europeans use the 24-hour system, as opposed to the 12-hour system used in English-speaking countries. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, all right, Anna Carolina. How do you write the month, day, and year? Day, month, year? Probably. Like the Europeans. Yeah, I day, think America. Yeah. But our our week starts on Sunday as well. It does. Uh huh. Oh my God! I got a Europe. I guess it must be your. I didn't even realize this. It must be European calendar, and I hung it in my office, and it confuses me every single time. I keep messing up the proper day, the date, you know, the number, because I keep. I look at the one on the far left, and I think it's Sunday. So anyway, it never ceases to confuse me. It confuses me every time I look at it. Uh, okay. All right, so week starts on Sunday for you, too. All right, great. Eh. Uh, all right. Uh, which 24-hour system, do you know what they're talking about here, Anna Carolina, the 24-hour yes. system as opposed yes. to? Yes, yes, instead of the 1 p.m., Europeans use uh, 13. Yeah. We, we do the same here in, in Brazil, but we can oh, use yeah. both. We can use both, to be honest. Okay. We use both. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting is the American military uses the 24-hour system. So for Americans, if yes, you start, I've, yeah, sorry. I've heard about it. Yeah. So if for an American, if you start using the 24-hour system, they assume you're in the military. I mean, if you don't have a foreign accent. So if you have a if you're American and you're using 24-hour system, we assume you're in the military automatically. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So by the way, going along with that, since everybody gets confused, and I have private students make this mistake all the time, Anna Carolina, 12 a.m. is what time? Noon. Or midnight. Midnight, teacher. Thank you. Very good. Gold star for you. Excellent. That is right. Everybody, 12 a.m. is midnight because at 12:01 it's a.m. It's in the morning, and 12 p.m. is noon. It starts the afternoon. So the second, it is one second afternoon. Noon, of course, being ex meridian, the sun is exactly straight up in the sky, so the minute is 12 and 1 second, it is afternoon, or post-meridian, uh, which is what PM stands for, to begin with, post-meridian, after, uh, as opposed to anti, which is before. Uh, okay, so there you go, important point there. Um, also, going along with this. I often have confusion with European students especially about this, about talking about what is the middle of the night, what is the morning, okay? We say 3 in the morning, it's the morning. It's 3 a.m., 3 hours after midnight. And for us, for an American, 3 in the morning is the middle of the night, all right? Because you probably, most people don't go to bed until, I don't know, 11, 12, 1 in the morning, you get up at 7 or 8. So 3, in the, three 4, that's the middle of the night. 2, 3, 4, that's what we kind of loosely refer to as the middle of the night. Um, it's really not the middle of the night. It's not midnight, okay? So it's, it's a lie. It's all a secret plot. Um, not really, but if you hear an Amer American talk about the dogs woke him up in the middle of the night, um, then that's what they're talking about, like 3 in the morning. Okay, let's talk about public holidays. Malik, can you take over? Can you read uh, the little section on public holidays, please? Uh, uh, public holidays, International Workers' Day. Uh, Labor Day or May Day on 1st May is a national holiday in most European countries, but not in the USA. EU countries also celebrate Europe Day 5th or 9th May, although it is not an official. 
Oh, sorry. Holiday yet. Okay. Malik, where, where are you from? I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. Do you have a Labor Day holiday? Yeah, we have. You have? Yes, on the 1st May. On the 1st May, really? Okay. Yeah. Some, somehow I get the feeling that Americans are missing out on this one. All right. Uh, American Labor Day will be... Um, well, heck, I believe it's going to be one week from today. It is the first Monday in September. For Americans, Labor Day is considered the official, unofficial. Yep, did you hear that? The official, unofficial. Yeah. Um, it's kind of official but unofficial. End of summer. It is the, the holiday that marks the end of summer. Most people... Uh, the fir again, it's the first Monday in September, so a lot of people have a long weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Many people go to the beach one last time or, or take out that barbecue, have a last summer-type celebration, a, a pool party, a barbecue, a day at the beach, something like that. It's kind of the, the last day of summer. As opposed to, I know, I know May 1st is like the first day of spring, right? For the unofficial, official first day of spring, or, or something like that. Or something. You don't have the exact date for an International Workers Day? Exact date? No. It's one of these weird holidays, Malik, that we, <laughs> we, we say, um, it's like Thanksgiving, same thing. Okay. Labor Day is the first Monday in September. Whatever date, you know, number, date. Uh, okay. Whatever so date. the first Monday in September. Yeah. So, first Monday. So, a day uh, is, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A date is the number. So, it's the first Monday. Just like um, Thanksgiving, uh, an American... A uh, holiday, which is basically like a harvest celebration, and that is the third November in. Uh, sorry, the third week in November, regardless of what day of the week it falls on. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> we have a few holidays like that in, okay. in the United States. Okay. Anyway. What do, what do people do in Pakistan for Labor Day? Is there any special celebrations? Do people get the day off? What what happens? No, there's no special celebrations for Labor Day. Nothing really happens? Uh, we, we, yeah. I myself don't celebrate it, so I don't know about other people living in other cities. Okay. No, <laughs> you don't. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Some people celebrate it. I, I saw news. Celebrating Labor Day. But oh, really? myself, I don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Malik, I have to jump out and perhaps correct some misunderstandings here. Mustafa, what are you telling Anna Carolina? <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I, was, I think she was right. She said, "I earned a gold medal from a gold, a gold medal, I think. Yeah, gold from teacher, star. something like that. Yeah. Gold star from teacher. Okay. I said, I uh, what I said. Uh, what I uh, how much how 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 I correct here? Uh, okay. Wait. I said I earned money is more correct to say I earned, I gained, I gained maybe a gold star from well, the actually." Teacher. She earned it. She did something special. We can. We usually use earn for money. You're not wrong. You earn money. That's why we go to work to earn money, yes. right? Yes. But also, you can earn something. Um, you earn a pat on the back. Good job. You earned a pat on the back. All right. You can earn rewards as well. Uh, then, then what you gain? What about gain? Gain. Um, well, you gain simply anything that you that you get more of than you had before. Okay, now it doesn't have to be because you did a good 
job. I mean, uh, we use we use the uh, adjectives ill-gotten gains, for example. Um, you could gain something by robbing a bank. Uh, okay, gains just means you have more than you used to have. So, okay, she is correct to say she earned a gold star. She did. She did extra, something extra special. She did that something good, really good. So she earned a little um, reward like that. You can earn a re reward. She, you can also say she gained a gold star. That's right, because she didn't have one before. So you, you could use either, okay. really. Okay. 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 All right. Um, okay. And uh, Anna Carolina, you, I think you trust him. I don't think you thrust him. <laughs> okay. That would not be right. Don't thrust poor Mustafa. <laughs> not his fault. <laughs> thrust him what? Out a window or what? Okay. Uh, you know what? Min is with us, and I have not greeted him yet, so let me do so. Hi, Min. How are you? Min? Hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, hello, teacher. There you are. Hi. Long Hi. time to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I hear a child in the background. Well, that's perfect. Uh, all right, let's talk about social customs. Min, can you read this next paragraph here? It's a long one, but go for it. Yes. Um, tradition, uh, tradition like baby showers and uh, behave by bachelors um, night with teachers organized. Uh, or, Originated in the USA and even though some made their way to Europe, at least in some uh, countries or social cycles, they are still regarded uh, as typically uh, American. For most uh, Europeans, this is some, something they only see uh, in the in American TV series and movies, the same is to of Thanksgiving and Halloween. Although the latter has exported itself very successfully uh, to Europe and East Asia from the late uh, 1990s onwards, American marketing. Mm, Stegis has also given rise to nationwide phenomena like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, uh, which uh, as potent as they are in the U.S. Hardly they any uh, equivalent in European countries. Okay. All right, men. Do you have uh, do you celebrate Halloween in your country at all? Yes, and in, uh, in uh, our country we also celebrate the Halloween. Uh, really? No kidding. Do your children dress up in a costume like that? No. <laughs> I mean, and no? Only the adult uh, celebrates the uh, Halloween. Oh really? Only the adults? No yeah. kidding. Oh wow, that's crazy. H Halloween for for Americans is mostly all about the kids. It's really a children's holiday, actually. So send them out on the street and trick or treat. Although the adults like to have a costume party, it's an excuse to have a party as well. Um. Uh. But uh. No, that's that's strange. What? Wait a minute, Min. What do you? What do the adults do for Halloween? Uh, they uh, they wear the uh, costume uh -huh. and uh, uh, ring beer and s something uh, and uh, celebrate together in okay. a restaurant or in a pub. Yeah. 
Uh, restaurants and pubs. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Wow, that's great. Okay. I, I'm sure you probably don't have Thanksgiving, though. I don't think Thanksgiving exports. Yes, we very don't well. have uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Thanksgiving's not nearly as fun as Halloween. Um, right. Uh, do you have similar things to Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Do you know what Black Friday and Cyber Monday are, Min? Yes, Black Friday is the day uh, we sell up the things, yeah. We don't have the Cyber Monday, yeah. No, not yet. Haha, <laughs> Min, notice <laughs> you said yet. He said yet, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yet. So someday, yeah, you'll get sucked into the corporate consumerism of American globalization. Yeah. Okay. Do you, wait a minute. Do you, do you have Black Friday? Do you have this idea of everything yes. crazy? We have Black Fridays and some yeah. supermarkets uh, celebrated uh, no Friday. Kidding. Okay. Wow. Crazy. I, I myself protest. I, I don't even go to a store on Black Friday, and I won't even go online on Cyber Monday. It's my personal protest against American consumerism and American marketing. I refuse. It's my tiny, 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 tiny show of protest. Uh, okay. I would also add to all of this, Americans love any excuse to have a party, a baby shower, a bachelor's party, a Halloween party. Um, I'm having a barbecue. Let's have a swimming pool party. Let's have an after hours party. Let's have a, oh, it's National Tree Day party. Oh, today's National Pencil Day. Let's have a party. We don't really care. And frankly, we'll have a party if we have no reason to have a party. And I've been in a few countries, including the one I'm in now in the Philippines, where they don't have a party unless there's a reason. Americans don't need a reason to have a party um, at all. We just say, I'm having a party. That's it. Uh, okay. Thanks, man. Well, I'm going to move on. Mustafa, schooling. Okay. Schooling. Schools and universities are free in, the, in most European countries. Europeans see university as granted, while American families often have to stay for years for their children to attend one. What is more, university, what is more, universities in most countries around the world have entry exams, while only a few European countries do, like the UK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same. Okay. Well, okay. you might as well read this last little blurb here. Okay. North Americans have prom night at the end of the last academic year of high school, uh, sometimes also middle school, while Europeans have no such tra tradition. Okay. Um, all right. First of all, well, this is slightly misleading, I have to say. Uh, Okay, um, in, in the United States, look, the reality is there is a, a mix of things that people do, and usually it's a mix of things an individual does to pay for university. Yes, your parents save for years, and if your parents can help you pay, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But also, uh, there are uh, there is a wide variety of scholarships or grants available in the United States. Mm -hmm. Almost anyone is going to qualify for some grants, and grants you don't have to pay back the money. But every American qualifies automatically just by being an American. You qualify for a student loan. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody doesn't qualify. Which means you can get a loan, I think the interest rate is 1.5% or something. It's very, very low interest rate, or maybe 0.5%. I don't know. It's very low. And so if you really want to go to university, you can go, and you can continue to get a student loan as long as you don't flunk out of college, as long as you don't fail. You can keep getting loans. So you don't have to, but of course, if your family can help you pay, then you won't have to pay back the government for the next 
10 to 20 years of your life. So it makes a huge difference. So many Americans have to borrow money to go to university. When they graduate, they owe a lot of money, you know, tens of thousands, okay. if, if not a hundred okay. thousand. Okay, so teacher, as long as you keep up uh, doing good, all right, and you're maybe studying, you, you can keep keep up also receiving loans. Uh, and then, right. teacher, how can you uh, repay or pay back the loan? Like after you graduate yeah. and work, you yeah. have to pay it back or what? Yeah, they come due, like, I can't remember. I'm, it's been a while. I'm getting old, Mustafa, but... They come due uh, like uh, 12 months after you graduate university, I think. Something like that. It gives you a little time just in case you suddenly decide you need to go get your master's degree, in which case you can get more loans and owe more money. Uh, this, is, this is a cool, this is a cool thing. Yeah. It's cool, but you better get a master's degree in law or medicine so you can pay back that money. You get your master's in philosophy and good luck. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. At least for the bachelor, bachelor degree is also a cool thing because I yeah. think uh, to to get a job is more easy right there, right? Or also it's hard to find a job after you graduate. Yeah, you know, it, the economy. You know, just like the rest of the world, the economy in America goes up and down and up and down. And mm, who knows? Okay. I refuse because to go. Go yeah, out on that limb, Mustafa. It, yeah, okay, okay. But imagine if you cannot find a job after you graduate, so how can you wait for like, after 12 months? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Now, I think my story is fairly typical. I received a lot of scholarships that paid for a good portion. I had very good grades, so I got a lot of scholarships. I borrowed some money from the federal grant system, uh, federal loan system, and I also worked while I was mm -hmm. in university to mm -hmm. pay, mm -hmm. you know, I paid for things like food and books and yeah. housing by working and working I during see. the summer. Yeah, I see what you mean, like some, some, even though some, some people like, or some students work uh, during the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then I have to take, I can take less of a school loan. Nobody wants a, you know, nobody wants to owe a hundred thousand American dollars when they the, and not have a job. You graduate school and that's what you have to look forward to. It's, it's not mm. exciting. I mean, it's not, it's not fun. But uh, okay. And then of course there's prom night. I think this is a a tradition that every country should you should go ahead and adopt this one. <laughs> Wait, sorry, teacher. I have to ask you one question about this. The prom sure. night. Yeah. Prom night, like you mean? Why you mean like night? Why from? I don't ah. know. Is it all night or what? <laughs> yes, it is all night. That's why. I pretty, oh, okay. I pretty much think ninety percent of all teenage kids graduating high school go to prom night see the dawn because it is all night. That's why it's an all night okay. event. You you have a you, you get a date, you rent a limousine, you rent a tuxedo, you go have a very expensive dinner, romantic dinner, you go to a dance, which is sponsored by usually your class. Um, uh, you go to this big dance, the dance has a theme, Under the Sea, or last chance or stairway to heaven or some stupid slogan and every all the decorations are based on that theme okay the dance lasts whatever uh, till midnight till two in the morning whatever and then there are parties all night long after the dance so it's quite uh, yeah it's an all night thing it's prom night for sure okay okay and it's it's a great tradition. <laughs> Never forget it. No one forgets their prom night, really. It's fun. Uh, okay. Let's see. Languages. All right. Moving on. Uh, Greg, let's talk about languages. 
Um, okay, foreign language learning in Europe is now compulsory in every country since primary elementary school. Most Europeans learn two to four foreign languages for obvious reasons. Americans usually only speak English, their mother tongue for immigration because they do not need more in their huge country. What's their mother tongue for immigrants? Well, I don't know about this. I don't know anybody who didn't take Spanish in high school, really. And I personally, I came from close to the Canadian border, close to um, close to Quebec, which is French-speaking province of Canada. So we learned French in in high school. Actually, since from fourth grade, starting in fourth grade. Uh, how about you, Greg? What languages were you taught in school as you were growing up as a child, and when? Um, in the middle school, I was learning German for three years. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I was learning uh, English and German. And in high school, I was learning English and German. Okay. So, all right. Plus your native language. So, all right. You've got, uh, all right, as they say, two About to four learn foreign languages. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, so two foreign languages, German and English only. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. I guess it's, that part's true then. Okay. Um, as far as you're not, concerned. Not, it's, in some cases, you will see people who were in school only German or maybe only in English. It's happening mm -hmm. because it is like if they will send you to this class, you are learning English for many years, and maybe you will have one or two of the language or maybe not. So you will see those kind of people. Mm, okay. All right. Interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're talking about here. Uh, Americans usually only speak English. Well, okay. In high school, not, not in, in university, they usually, that's true, they don't bother. But in uh, high school and middle school, it's very normal to have a mandatory second language class. So I don't know, really know what they're talking about. The problem is once the, you graduate high school, you never use the second language, so people forget it. And it is obviously true, because when I finished high school, I even went to, this, to the finals with the, with the German, and 10 years mm -hmm. later, I never had a chance to speak German, so I obviously yeah. I cannot really say a word uh, in this <laughs> language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my French is pitiful now. Uh, years later, forget it. Um, okay, yeah, right. I hear you there. Feeling you there, Greg. Uh, okay, Jose, let's talk politics. Ooh, evil okay. politics. Politics. Europeans tend to be more liberal regarding soft drugs, prostitution, alcohol, abortion, or cloning. But interestingly, not so for GM food. Americans, on the contrary, grant greater freedoms when it comes to gun possession, as well as driving a car from a relatively young age. The norm is uh, 18 years old in Europe. Yes, uh -huh. that's true. Okay. Jose, when did you get your driver's license? 18? Uh, 18 years old. Yeah. Okay. It's mandatory in in Europe. You cannot obtain them before you are 18 years old. Is that right? Okay. I got my license. Oh man, you! I was so excited about getting my driver's license. I got my driver's license uh, when I was 16. On my 16th birthday, I was waiting outside the testing center, like an hour before they opened the door. I was waiting on the steps so I could be the first person to go inside. <laughs> Crazy. So I was 16. And, 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 uh, when you are 16 years old, you can't uh, drive at, at night, no? When you're when, 16. When, when you started to, to drive at, uh, on uh, 16 years old, you can't uh, drive at uh, night, no? O only uh, yes, you can. During the, during the day, yes? Yeah, it's just totally normal. You can drive day, night, uh, by yourself. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. When you're 15, you're allowed to get what's a per called a permit, and then you have to drive 
with another uh, a person who has a driver's license. And that rule uh, is slightly okay. different in different places. Some places you can't drive at night. Some places the other person in the car has to be over 18 plus have a driver's license. So that rule about learning to drive when you have a permit is different state to state. Okay, depending so, on the state, it's clear. Yeah, but pretty much everywhere, 16 is it. You, once you're 16, you can totally drive. Day I, I, heard, I heard something about it, but I didn't have uh, so much clear. Yeah. No, yes, go. yes. Yeah. It's, here's a funny one for you. If you happen to be a farmer or live on a farm or whatever, you can drive a tractor, you know, tractors for the fields. Yes, you, yes. Can, you can legally drive a tractor like from one field to another on the road uh, in the United States if you're 12 years old. <laughs> 12 years old? Only. That's only. right. So, <laughs> you know, you have a tractor with a big cart full of cow manure or corn or something, you can drive down the road. And I know this is true because I did it. I learned to drive a tractor, a farm tractor, when I was 12. Yeehaw. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I know it's true about GM food, right, Jose? People are kind of concerned about that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Americans don't know anything about it, frankly. Okay. Uh, okay. And we got. Yes. May, may I make a comment? Yeah, sure. I believe that the American people are lenient regarding those things because abortion is legal in the U.S. Uh, yeah, with certain certain specific uh, protocols, you have, to, you have to be less than a certain number of uh, days or weeks old or something like that. And, and someone yeah. told me that the vast majority of people who smoke marijuana. <laughs> yeah, nobody really cares about marijuana anymore in America. True. But it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous because the jail sentence for Americans is, is you go to jail for smoking marijuana. But does everybody smoke it? Yes, they do. So it's kind of ridiculous. I think more people probably smoke marijuana than drink alcohol in the United States, frankly, because there's a lot of people that don't drink alcohol in the United States. But on the other hand, the penalties are very severe for being caught with marijuana, for prostitution, for like drinking and driving. You go to jail for this stuff, for performing an illegal abortion. My God, you go to jail for 10 years for that easily. So lenient yeah socially but as far as law and the government's concerned no I wouldn't say lenient at all it's kind of a strange thing there Anna Caroline I don't know how to explain it um, people don't care only the government cares I don't know <laughs> it's kind of crazy Americans are crazy there that says it all uh, okay, Rebecca, last, probably last thing we're going to have time for. I should have made this two classes. We're not even halfway. All right. So the last reading. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, government system. Americans have a Congress, while Europeans all have parliaments. American politics is chiefly curtailed to, to two parties which would be center-right and right, but lack influential left-wing or green parties. It is rare for a European country to have less than three main parties. It is often four or five which makes politics less bipolar, but often, often also more complicated to reach agreements. The American poli uh, police FBI is much more aggressive than the police in European. Car chases break into houses with guns shooting, 
Police don't move hands on your <laughs> yes. Police don't move hands on your head. <clears throat> oh, such sense almost none exists in Europe. Suspects in the U.S. are detained detain detain more easily and interrogated more harshly. Americans also go to court much more promptly than in Europe. Yeah. Okay. Well, well there you go, the American police. Um, kind of dealing with what Anna Carolina was talking about. I mean, I don't. My grandmother, who's church going, never swore, never touched alcohol in her life, wouldn't even know what drugs look like. She's been stopped by the police. I mean, it's impossible to live in America without having some kind of confrontation with the police sooner or later in your life. <laughs> It's just really impossible. Uh, so, more lenient in the social attitudes, yeah, but less lenient when it goes to the police grabbing you, smacking you in the head with a gun, dragging you to jail, throwing you in the jail, and kicking you hard, for example. <laughs> they don't mind doing that. Okay, anyway... We are out of time. We could talk about this forever. I could definitely talk about this forever, but we can't because I'm already late for my next class. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much.